naval aviation is a major topic at Euronaval this year as Florence Parly, the French Minister of Armed Forces, officially launched the aircraft carrier renewal program yesterday. These studies are said to take 18 months and will help determine several factors such as the size of the aircraft carrier, how many of them are needed and the propulsion type for them. Dassault Aviation unveiled this NGF scale model. NGF stands for Next Generation Fighter. This is still a concept. Dassault is cooperating with Airbus, but is the prime contractor for this aircraft, which is set to replace the Rafale fighter from 2040 to 2080. And this will be a carrier-borne aircraft featuring very advanced stealth characteristics. You know, I, I did hear the announcement. I was actually on an aircraft flying over from San Diego when I heard the announcement that was made um, that said the, uh, the French Navy is formally kicking off a study for their new aircraft carrier that will include a study of technologies, including the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. I was disappointed I wasn't here to participate myself, but it was nice to hear that. And then I read a, a very good article yesterday also by you. I think that the, the fact that the United States has invested money on the new electromagnetic technology, both for a launch system and a resting gear system, um, will give you commonality between uh, different navies, number one. But number two, um, it's going to be about reliability and capability. I mean, the idea of having software and being able to have precision control on lightweight aircraft or heavy aircraft, obviously if it benefits the United States, it would benefit other countries. Jell Atomic standby to work with NAVAIR, our U.S. Navy customer, to support the French study. Uh, and with yesterday's announcements, we hope to hear more this week so that uh, hopefully those studies can begin in earnest soon. There are several maritime aircraft on the static display at Euronaval 2018, including an MH60R Romeo maritime helicopter, an F-18 Super Hornet fighter, a Growler electronic attack aircraft, and an E-2D Advanced Okai. Good morning, I'm uh, Lieutenant John Pavlock with BAW-126 on board the Harry S. Truman. I'm the aircraft commander of this uh, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye here that we uh, brought to Euro Naval 2018 to, to show off and talk about the capabilities and uh, what it brings to the fight and how uh, this, this brand new Hawkeye can really bring a more advanced weapon system into the French Navy's capabilities should they adopt it. And just an awesome opportunity to also hang out in Paris and to uh, get to know a bunch of the, the companies that are, are behind warfighters like myself and my crew, that we can all come together and really get to know each other and talk about the advances in engineering sciences and the capabilities of our airframes. Which aircraft are you uh, considering uh, to replace uh, the current uh, three Okais of the French Navy? Um, I, currently, we, we are um, considering mainly uh, the, the new generation of E2D, uh, which is uh, already in service in the U.S. Navy, um, especially because we will um, we're taking care of the of the period uh, the, the period of transition between the two generations the two generations uh, uh, that period will be critical for us because we have that a uh, small squadron uh, of aircraft uh, and so uh, we have to be to uh, uh, to take care of that period uh, and to manage um, the the transition to be the most mus the most smoothly as as possible when do you think uh, those uh, advanced Okais could potentially be procured in France? Uh, by the end of the 2020s, yes. Um, I, I cannot give you an, an answer 
precise, more precise answer because it's uh, depending of the, of the planification. And as you know, it will be after the current uh, uh, law of, of planification. Okay. But to to uh, to uh, 2027, something like that could be uh, could be uh, an idea. And will would those uh, new advanced Hawkeyes aircraft uh, come in addition to the existing Hawkeyes, or would they be replacing the three existing Hawkeyes? They will be replacing the three, and uh, once again, with that uh, critical period of transition, uh, we are looking very uh, carefully at it. My name is Nicholas Askamp, I'm the CEO of the company Servicopter, which is a 100% daughter of Airbus. This is a system that we, we can use, for example, in the Navy to project further away capabilities to be able to see what's going on, further away from where the, the, the ships are going to be, and to protect the team. Um, we've been working on the, on the Navy side, for example, since 2009. So we have a long experience of being able to launch a drone like this, which is a small tactical drone, from a ship and to get him back on the ship as well, safe and sound. Operational range, you can send it up to 50 kilometers away, where you have um, the images will be sent directly back to, uh, to the ship in real time. Um, in terms of payloads, you can put different types of payloads on this one. You can put uh, IR uh, capabilities, you can put normal cameras capabilities and in all in AG, AG quality for for the normal cameras. During the Euronaval show basically we are presenting the family of uh, maritime solutions. We have here our traditional C-295, that is a maritime surveillance and maritime patrol. But the, the big news is uh, corresponding to the first presentation in an event of the A320 uh, maritime patrol based on the A320 NEO. It's a, it's a new project. It's, uh, we are analyzing just the, the market uh, for maritime patrol and analyzing the possibilities to present a new solution for the, uh, capable to fulfill the re future requirements of the navies and their forces. Basically, A320 Maritime Patrol Aircraft is an aircraft capable of conducting anti-submarine warfare missions and as well anti-surfer warfare. Basically, it's composed by a set of, uh, with, with a mission system, composed by a set of sensors for the detection of uh, surface and subsurface targets. Basically, it's, it's equipped with a multi-mission radar with electro-optical uh, turret for the classification and identification of the targets with uh, electronic surveillance equipment and as well for the specific requirements of the detection of submarines with uh, uh, acoustic system and processing and a magnetic anomaly detector. Most of the equipment are installed on the belly from the nose to the, to the, to the tail and uh, there is an important part that is that is not only capable of the surveillance and the detection, it's as well capable for attacking the threats that we are having. Basically, we have the capacity for carrying weapons on the two sides. For anti summer warfare, basically we have the capability to transport up to eight torpedoes that are placed on a conditioned bomb bay in the, in the belly, in the rear part of the belly of the aircraft. And it's capable as well for transporting uh, search and rescue packages. And just yes, typically for the anti-surface warfare, we are having uh, four underwind stations that is enabling the transport and the, and the launching of anti-vessel missiles. Basically, we are in a, our configuration, it's open, open architecture for everything, and we are flexible to install different models of sensors, different models of uh, weapons, according to the needs of the different uh, nations that can be uh, the target, uh, 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 target operators for the A320 American Patrol. Of course, that is optimized for operating in two modes. One in the standalone, then we have the, just the command and control capacity for the decision making on board the aircraft, thanks to a modern tactical system. 
and as well we are able just to work uh, concurrently with other units, other cooperative units, thanks to the use of the most modern communication equipment like uh, tactical data links or just the use of military satcom that enable just to send information or video from high definition uh, sensors uh, on board the aircraft.